Hello everyone and welcome to the big test of the Volkswagen ID.5 for newbies. I wanted to make a big test of this car but not just for people who know electric cars very well, also for people who are new to the electric car space and they uh, want to know more about this car, if this would be a car for them in the future. The ID models of Volkswagen are right now available within two or three months, so the delivery time really decreased. For some configurations it's even faster. And if you order an ID3, 4 or 5 within Germany, there's a referral program right now. If you use the link in the description below, we both get 200 euros charging credit. And if you want to support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description below. And here on YouTube there's channel membership. The ID.5 is very similar to the ID.4. The only really big change is here in the rear, where the ID.4 it goes a bit up here. That means you get a bit more trunk space and a bit more space for the rear passengers. But because of this form, ID.5 has a bit less consumption. Let's talk about the specs. You can have this car with rear wheel drive like this one here, 204 horsepower or all wheel drive, the GTX version with 300 horsepower. There's only one battery size, uh, 82 kilowatt hour battery, but you can only use 77 kilowatt hours because you need a buffer on top so the battery is never really fully charged and also a buffer on the bottom uh, so it's never really empty. The ID.5 starts at 47,000 euros here in Germany. Um, like I said, you can only get the big battery. That's why the ID.4 starts lower, because in the ID.4 you can also get a smaller battery. It can go up to around 66,000 euros if you really spec it. And if you spec the GTX version uh, to full, you can get up to 70,000 euros. Let's talk about range. This car has a WLTP range of around 540-550 kilometers. Important here is WLTP range is a test that's a standard test for all electric cars so you can compare them a bit. But range is highly impacted on how you're driving. So WLTP range doesn't say that you get this range on the highway when you drive 130 or even faster. Also you don't get this when it's raining, when it's cold. So what affects the range or the, con or the consumption very much in driving an EV is the temperature. So if it's cold outside you have a higher consumption. Even though if you don't use heat just because it's cold, then if you use the heat in the car, AC also takes energy but not as much as heating up the car. And then the speed. So if you drive 130 that's increasing, it's an amazingly higher consumption than with 90 for example or even slower. That's why I did some tests. I did a short range test on the highway with 90 kilometers an hour. I do this at this speed because it's a representation of a mix with country and city driving. And I drove 93 kilometers uh, an hour shown on the speedometer because this speedometer is, shows 3 kilometers an hour too much. 
and I did it on the highway so I can drive at a constant speed and I drove almost 100 kilometers average speed is 86 consumption is 159 watt hours per kilometer which is 15.9 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers I started at 98% and I used exactly 20% and drove 99 kilometers that would mean 495 kilometers of range Now I drove the exact same test with 130 kilometers an hour. Average speed was then 123 kilometers an hour. Took me 48 minutes. Average consumption 224 watt hours per kilometer, which is 22.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And I started with 78%, arrived with 49. Google Maps tells me it's exactly 100 kilometers and I used 29% that would mean a range of 345 kilometers. Now I did a little city test. I drove 17 kilometers in the city, took me 31 minutes, that's a low average speed, consumption 143 watt hours per kilometer. You can charge this car either with AC here with the type 2 plug with 11 kilowatt or DC so fast charger on the way when you're on a long distance trip and this here with this car can go up to 140 kilowatt and it will be above 100 kilowatt to around 70 percent this is really good that means 10 to 80 percent should be done in th uh, around 30 minutes a bit under and on a long distance trip that means you can charge in this half hour about 250 to 300 kilometers of range in there there's also something very important to know when it comes to charging a battery cannot be charged with the peak charging power and extremely fast when the battery is cold or when the state of charge is very high so for example when you plug plug in this car when it's at 80 percent you don't get 150 140 kilowatt but for this car it has to be at around 15 percent state of charge to get this and temperature is another thing so in the winter when you have this car in the cold and then you drive a few kilometers and then you plug it in the battery is not warm it's a big block of metal that takes a while to heat up and so when you plug it in even at 15 percent you don't get the 140 kilowatt but this battery can be heated up there's a, a heater in there but so far Volkswagen has not implemented that the battery is being heated either by a button or when you navigate to a charger and also important the 140 kilowatt is a peak it doesn't stay on for the whole time so it all depends where you plug in then you get special charging curve that you can see here it all depends when you plug in what charging power you get and it will get slower and slower the charging power or less power the higher the state of charge is on a long distance trip you don't want to charge too much above 80 percent because that takes very long for the health of your battery it's important that daily use you only charge it to 80 percent and then sometimes when you go on a long distance trip you charge it to 100 percent the night before don't let it stay at 100 percent for too long the trunk has the amazingly easy open function where you just do with your leg and even when the when the the car is locked and you just come close to it because you have the key in your pocket the trunk overall is really big you have a second floor under here and this thing you can even take out and you have a 12 volt outlet here and two lights as so a one light on each side and you have a ski hatch if you need that a lot of EVs have a front that's a trunk in the front the ID5 does not have that here in the front there's nothing for you to do really except for putting in washer fluid. 
on the driver's seat you have everything that you need you have a lot of headroom have like this much headroom so much space it's very spacey because the design choice here is not a lot of buttons and a lot of free room you have everything to control your seat position you have two memory functions and massage function if you want that in the door we have something nice and soft where you put your elbow on and here in the middle we have the armrest steering wheel can be adjusted in and out up and down of course in the middle we have two cup holders and this thing you can take out and we have another big pocket that you can close and also there's a phone holder two USB C's and in there you can have a wireless charger for your phone on the rear seats as you can see I have a lot of leg room again my seat is for my position in, uh, in the moment in, in the moment uh, at the moment uh, it's totally on the on the floor and I'm 180 centimeters I have a tiny bit of headroom not too much I'm almost touching so that's not amazing um, I'm sitting a bit upright it's it's not a nice position as it is in the front but it's still okay you have the same cushioning for the door you have window controls no seat heater in the rear you have this pocket and a pocket in the door two USB C's here and you can adjust your temperature and you have two air vents the headrest can be still adjusted very high it's comfy uh, but like I said I'm really touching almost touching the the roof I have an armrest here in the middle with two cup holders that's also very nice and soft and important with the sport seats you have this hole and you can scare the driver in front to death if you want to do that the window opening is here only two if you want to rear you press rear you have your mirror control with folding and heating light control with front and rear fog lights and you also have your to defog the front window and you have front heated window and rear heated window indicators and high beams your wiping control with rain sensor and sensitivity on the left of your steering wheel you have your cruise control function on the right you have your view button for the instrument cluster your volume for your music next or previous song and voice command underneath your screen you have your temperature control volume control that you can swipe or press and then here underneath you even have your parking menu your climate menu assist menu and your drive mode and up here you can turn on your light with this button all of it here's your SOS button and here you can open the sunshade for your panoramic roof the cockpit view with this button on your steering wheel you change the view normally you have your assist system here your speed battery so state of charge range and in the bottom if you use power or region here and here on the right you can have either your trip data or your navigation and with the view button you can focus it either on the assist system have everything in there or focus on the trip data for example in the front you have the ID light which is a LED strip all the way that can show you different things so example now this is on it can show you navigation with blue with green when you're charging and when someone is calling or when you use the voice control the head-up display is a mirror of the cockpit view so on the left you have your assist system in the middle your speed and your speed limit recognition and on the right you have your navigation you cannot have your consumption on the right and you cannot change this view if you're not navigating the navigation is just gone and above that you have an uh, augmented reality part which shows you for example if your lane assist set tells you that you're not in the lane if there's a car in front of you when you use adaptive cruise control and it shows you what car does it use for the distance and if your travel assist is on and the big thing is your navigation it will show you when you have to go off the highway or something or to the right 
and it will also increase the the size of the arrow that when you have to go out so you it feels like you you're this thing is on the road not just displayed and it looks amazing the infotainment system you have your normal home screen where you see your temperature and if your seat heating is on so if you press this you get to all of your functions and you can swipe over you can also use the gesture control that's why those buttons underneath are not illuminated in your home view you can have your map music and other things for example your trip data and your navigation here and you can change this with a long press here you can then change it to something different uh, depending on the size you have different options that you can do the on off button by the way does not only mute the music it stops it you have a navigation where you have a, a settings that you can plan that it should add charging stops automatically and you can ha have a few settings uh, at how you arrange uh, how you arrive at the destination or at a charger you can let the navigation show the charging stations in night mode day mode and also the range so when i zoom out here when it's outside of the range it gets you can see this limit line in vehicle you have all of your settings for the interior and the exterior and you have your trip data also your odometer and the distance uh, covered uh, trip in the charging window you can set your charge limit so at what to what state of charge it will charge there's battery care mode where if you put it on a hundred percent after this charging session it will automatically go back to 80 percent in locations you can set a charging location where you could then have a plan scheduled charging when it will charge to what state of charge and at what time it should be at that state of charge android auto and apple carplay works via usb-c here in the front not in the rear um, and you can also use it without a cable via wi-fi and it uses mostly all of the screen but you still have your home button here so you can always get back to your normal screen without doing anything special you have users where you can have different users for your car they then all have different settings in the infotainment system the seating position and the mirror position also changes background light is the ambient light which you can change in brightness in color and all of this stationary air conditioning is to plan to what temperature at what time and what day it should heat up the car uh, or cool it driver assist is the same as the button underneath where you can set settings for your adaptive cruise control what distance it should use road layout preview means if it uh, knows that this is a strong corner it will automatically slow you down end of queue preview i don't even know <laughs> speed limit preview changes the speed of your cruise control according to the speed limit but exactly to that you cannot set it to five kilometers an hour more or something it's when it's 100 it's 100. here's also your lane assist that you can turn off side assist driver alert system that you don't fall asleep dynamic road sign uh, display where you can set it that it shows you if you drive too fast eco assist where it, it tells you maybe you should slow down here and use reach in here and stuff like this front assist is a safety function that if something happens it will break automatically you have a shop where you can buy or get for free more functions like games or at some point there will be spotify and something like this and you have settings where you can go in and have more settings about the screen home button design your wi-fi settings and all of this you have a shortcut menu when you swipe down from the top where you can change what you see here you have uh, multiple functions that you can put in here put it in dark or bright mode in here you have your notifications if there is anything the drive modes when you go on this you can be either in eco where your climate control and your 
uh, po power of the motor is, is being restricted but if you floor it you have full power again. Comfort you have normal power, the a uh, AC so climate is doing its normal thing and in sport uh, you have a bit more torque in the beginning but overall it's not that much difference and in individual when you go in here you can set it the way that you want to so for example the dcc dynamic chassis control you can set it more to sport or to comfort you can set the steering a different way so in comfort it's lighter to steer in sport it's a bit harder you drive so how the power is there acc means it's for example when i put it into eco that the adaptive cruise control when there's a, a speed change it does it uh, with less power it's more comfortable and then air conditioning means that uh, it uses less power to heat or cool the the car light assistance i don't know the climate you get through this button here and then you have either smart climate where you have presets defog windows warm my feet warm hands and so on you have the classic climate where you set everything yourself your seat heating your steering wheel heating or the temperature for the rear and you have air care where the the AC is cleaning the air in here and then you have extra settings in here where you can set and switch on at, switch on at start of journey depending on temperature so when it's cold you can have your seat heating or your steering wheel heating automatically on let's accelerate i'm at a hundred percent because in a low state of charge it's possible that you don't have full power depending on the car and in the id5 you can see that very well when the blue line is full that means you have full power the same with region when it's just half right now because i'm full i don't have full region not full regenerative braking i will go in here so we can see the instant consumption which is not amazing uh, because you don't accelerate like this for half an hour <coughs> i'm in sport mode i will go into d then with auto hold stop at the straight and then accelerate full and we'll see what it is from zero to 100 kilometers an hour Eight point eight seconds. Four hundred meter. Let's drive the ID five. First, you have the key. It's a very simple key. You have an emergency key in here. If the twelve volt battery would be empty, so you can still get in the car. You only have three buttons: unlock, lock, and trunk opening. If you hold this, the trunk will open. Since 3.0, you are welcome by this screen that for the for the profiles for the user, and you always have to say OK so you can get into the infotainment system. The ID5 has a button to turn on the ignition, but you don't need it. You press the brake and the car is on, and then you press the gear selector forward and you go into D, and when you press again, you go into B. The difference here is that D does not use regenerative braking. We talk about this in a second, and B does use that. The ID5 has creep. That means uh, if you don't have auto hold on, which you can turn off here, it will creep forward even though you're not pressing the accelerator pedal. By the way, you have a wonderfully good looking backup camera that you can have different views and you have a 360 degree camera. Also important, you can have the ID5 with Park Assist Plus. This is a function where there are extra sensors in the front and in the rear. This gives you the option when you use Travel Assist on the highway to do auto lane change. That means you set the blinker and the car will steer itself to the to overtake. Also, you get Park Assist. That means you can it will spot a, uh, a parking 
spot and then you can tell it to park itself and also you can have memory parking so every 50 meters before you stand still it will record your driving and so for example when you come home you can save that parking maneuver what you just did and then the next time you drive back into it will recognize the environment and say hey do you want me to park for you and when you say yes it will drive exactly like you did when you recorded that parking regenerative braking every electric car has regenerative braking this is that the motor the electric motor that propels you forward also can be used to brake the car down like a normal combustion engine but way stronger and the great part of it when it does that so with the, the speed you're driving it slows you down it generates energy and this is put back into the battery in the ID5, regenerative braking is not very strong. So when you go off the accelerator pedal, it will slow you down. It's not amazing. Even in the GTX version, where you have two motors that do that, it's, it's again not very strong. It also doesn't bring you to a standstill. So uh, it will go down to six kilometers an hour or so, and then just keep rolling forward. Overall driving in the ID5 is really amazing. It's very comfortable, quiet, the suspension is amazing, the steering wheel is incredible, it's stable, it's light to steer, it doesn't move away. Really awesome. Uh, we're gonna talk about the cruise control and self-steering and everything in a minute. It just the dr driving of this car is a lot of fun. I would have loved if the regen would be stronger, but hello, that's what we have. Overall, it's just amazing. Power is not very strong. It's a 200 horsepower motor for a, a heavy car. And you notice that the same as in cornering, you feel that it's a bit of a heavy car, but it still feels okay. Now we can hear very nicely the loudness of the car at 110, 130, 150 and then top speed is 160. It will show on the speedometer 163 or 64. 163 and that's it that's how fast you can go with the ID5 with the GTX version the all-wheel drive you can drive 180 cruise control to turn it on um, if to overall turn it on there's a button up here and then underneath you can switch between the speed limiter and adaptive cruise control and then when you have your speed you just press set it will set it to the speed that you were driving with the buttons up and down you can uh, change it with one kilometer an hour when you press slightly when you press hard it goes to the next round it up 10 kilometers an hour and when you swipe it does the same thing the distance you select by pressing the distance button and then you can press up and down buttons again or you just press the distance button more often then it goes goes up as well and when you want to use self steering you can turn this on with this button here now it steers itself you see two lines in the uh, uh, augmented reality head-up display and it will bug you after a while that you're not touching the steering wheel you see something in the ID light as well and when you still don't do it then you get a red a light and a beeping and you only have to touch it you don't have to steer against it touching is just fine let's look at the app the Volkswagen app it, it was just uh, renamed from Volkswagen from we connect ID to just Volkswagen and in the app you see your car you see that it's locked you see state of charge and your range you could see uh, the start charging and stop charging you could see the charging speed that you're using you can uh, start the air conditioning doesn't matter uh, if it's plugged in or not you can set departure times so that means 
at what time you want for example the 22 degrees in the car in the morning in the afternoon or whatever again doesn't have to be plugged in you can see your vehicle health you can see on the map where you are you can send navigation things so, so if you navigate uh, in here you can send it to the car that works you can put in your charge limit and change that for example I can do that to a hundred percent and save it and of course you have plug-in charge since software 3.1 um, ID cars have plug-in charge that on some chargers when you just plug in and you have your Wii charge a contract connected to the car it will automatically start charging you don't need a card or anything but it will use the we charge contract but you cannot lock the car for example or uh, uh, honk the horn or put the lights on or anything you can just see that it's not locked right now The charge port lights green when it's charging and white when you're just plugging in. You have this light that's been projected from the mirror down to the road. The door handles have a light. The trunk has two lights on each side one. The rear seats have this amazingly bright light on the roof when again when it's not a glass roof you have the light in the middle. In the front you have the two lights here and then you have your ambient light in the door, in here, in the middle and on the side and also here in the middle console and you can change the color and the brightness in the infotainment system. All buttons that you can press are illuminated also on the steering wheel. The only thing is not illuminated is the volume control and the temperature because for the gesture control there are infrared lights in here that shine out and they cannot be illuminated. The ID5 has LED lights in the rear and in the front. You can have matrix LED headlights. They can move so when you drive into a corner they move into the corner so you can see a bit better and also you have uh, side lights or cornering lights that means when you drive very slow and you have your indicator on in one direction extra light comes on on the side the greatest thing of the led matrix headlights is the high beam assist this lets you keep on the high beams even if a car is in front of you or coming towards you because segments of the matrix light can be turned off and it does so that the driver in front of you or coming towards you will not get blinded by the high beams but the rest is still on How is it to use this car every day? I think it's really amazing. You have preheating, of course, in the car. You can start this with your app. You can have scheduled preheating. So every day at 7 a.m. before you go to work, the car is warm or cool, whatever you need. Um, and it can be done if it's uh, plugged in, then it takes the, the power from your plug, not from the battery. Or when it's not plugged in, then of course of the battery. You can also have scheduled charging. That means you say, I only want to charge from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. because it's very cheap. Or uh, you say, I want uh, it at 80% in the morning, but don't want it to be there already right away. I want it to start charging so it's exactly at 80% at 7 a.m. in the morning. That all works. The daily use is just awesome. Like I said, the trunk is very easy to open with your foot, with, your, with a button on the key or with the uh, button on the trunk. It opens really fast. It doesn't uh, annoy you with thousands of beeps. Uh, you get in and out of the car very easily it unlocks amazing you can have keyless ent entry that means you just are close to the car and it just opens up it does it uh, very early so you're not there and you have to wait you're there and it's open for locking you just get out of the car and touch the door handle and it locks when going to work the cruise control is just very comfortable you can set it in a very comfortable way that it doesn't accelerate extremely fast it holds the distance very well uh, i love it for a daily driver to go to work and stuff like that mm -hmm. 
long distance driving. Like I said, you can charge this car with a peak of 140 kilowatt. Um, and it's not amazing charging power. There are so many cars that can charge way better and also can charge in the range from 10 to 80 uh, percent really fast. Um, so it's okay. It's not amazing. Consumption is also not the best. Hello, this is a big SUV and uh, rear wheel drive is a bit better than the GTX version. In the GTX you tend to use the power a bit when you accelerate out of a construction zone or something and then the consumption can get uh, way higher than in this car. Overall I think it's a bit underpowered with 204 horsepower here in the rear. It doesn't feel very sporty, very electric, but it's still very usable for a long distance trip. There are just other cars that are better. It definitely is comfortable though, so seats are comfortable, cruise control is amazing, uh, it's quiet in there, so when it comes to comfort it's really good. Now let's rate the Volkswagen ID.5. I have a little scoring system here from 1 to 10 in different areas. Let's start with controls. I give it a 6. Uh, by the way, this is of course extremely biased because it's my personal opinion. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like buttons. Um, I know it's more spacious, spacious with no button. It feels more uh, uh, free in there. But I like buttons for certain things, for seat heating, for climate. Uh, I love that I have these controls right here that I don't have to switch to go into something. The same with turning off lane assist. That's important to me. That's why only a six and also that the buttons underneath the screen are not illuminated because of the gesture control. Driving, I give it a 9 because it drives amazing. Yes, it doesn't have amazing power, even the GTX version, but still it's so comfortable, it's very stable, it's precise, all over driving, the suspension, I love it, the noise level as well. Region, I give it a 5. Of course it has region, but it's not very strong and Volkswagen explained that it's because of the rear wheel drive and I get it, but even in a GTX version it's not very good. So many competitors have way better region, they, they brake you way better, you barely have to touch the brake pedal in the ID.5. In all ID models you still have to do that a lot. There's no one pedal driving and that's very sad. Charging, I give in a 7. 11 kilowatt AC is totally fine. 140 kilowatt DC, it's not amazing, but it keeps the power above 100 kilowatt for very long. That's why a 7. Daily use, I give it a 10 because it's just so nice to use this car every day. Like I said before, with the unlocking, locking, getting in, driving, awesome. Long distance, I give it an 8. Not the best consumption and not the best charging, but extremely comfortable and easy to use and uh, stable and just relaxing. Price, I give it a 7. Not the cheapest car, would be nice to have the small battery in there as well, but we don't. Power, I give it a 6. Even the GTX with 300 horsepower doesn't feel amazingly powerful. And the 150 kilowatt, so 204 horsepower motor here in the rear wheel with the rear wheel drive feels a bit weak for the weight in the car. It doesn't give you the amazing power that you expect from electric. Space, I give it a 7 because you have enough space to put your stuff and the rear seats, if you don't have a very tall adult, it's fine. If you have someone who's tall, that's not fine. That's why a 7. Fun, I give it a 6 because of the power, what I just said. Cornering, it's okay, but it's also not a sporty car. That's why the 6. And night, I give it a 9 because it, you have uh, lights everywhere in the, in the car that are strong, even in the trunk too. The headlights are amazing. The Matrix LED with cornering lights, with uh, that it moves into the corners. The high beams uh, assist is just amazing. And the only thing why it's not a 10 is that the light, that the, the buttons underneath the screen are not illuminated. That's the only thing. And all together, it's a 7.27, so a 7.3. So please subscribe to the channel, it helps me a lot. I get new cars earlier and that's always great for you. And that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day and take care. Bye.